Matthew 27, starting in verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs, after his resurrection, they went out into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him Keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. Three of the four Gospels um, tell us about this centurion and this uh, proclamation that he made after seeing all these things. That this truly was the Son of God. So let's think about that for a second. So this was a Roman centurion. Uh, we, we are somewhat familiar with centurions from other pages in Scripture here. That uh, it was an officer, uh, typically over about a hundred men, um, in a Roman legion, and we read that centurions, uh, for the most part, uh, had a thorough understanding of authority. We see another example of that in the New Testament: thorough understanding of authority. And in this time, uh, they knew a lot about death, or at least saw a lot of death up close. Impersonal. So it's not clear which, which legion, rather, this centurion was a part of. However, there's a real possibility that he was part of the Lego 10th Vertinius Legion. So this, re, this legion was active in the Judean area during the time uh, of Christ, and the 10th legion here was involved in some major, major. Um, uh, campaigns, wars, political uprisings. They fought brutal wars of, of the Romans. Um, we read that after Jesus, it was a 10th legion uh, that played an instrumental role in the first and second Jewish revolt, and it also played a major role when Jerusalem and the temple was destroyed in AD 70. So here's my point, okay? The 10th legion was a serious fighting force. They were battle-scarred, Men of war. So we're talking like, like SEAL Team 6 level stuff here. So quite possibly, it was this kind of man who saw the death of Jesus and said, truly, this was the Son of God. I'm going to suggest to you this morning, these were not idle words from some um, frightened recruit or some easily manipulated uh, conscript. Uh, this was the reasonable conclusion of a seasoned veteran who was accustomed to death. He himself might have even put hundreds of people on crosses before putting Jesus on that cross. So when seeing the events and the evidence in front of him, there was no doubt in his mind this was the Son of God. And so the question is, do we have that same conviction? Do we have that same proclamation? This Roman, presumably pagan, uh, but this Roman centurion knew there was nothing ordinary about what he had just witnessed. Three things I would offer up for your consideration this morning as we remember Jesus. One, this was no ordinary execution. The darkness... The earthquake, the dead rising, Jesus crying out, uh, a cry of abandonment, convinced this man that this was not an ordinary execution. The events were terrifying and caused him to think about who had just died. Uh, in Luke, we read that uh, upon seeing this, uh, it says he praised God in, in calling him 
the Son of God. So this was no ordinary execution. Second thing, this was no ordinary power situation here. The centurion's conclusion did not come from some uh, messianic messenger. It was not an announcement, if you will. This conclusion came solely from the effects of the power of God at Golgotha on that dark day. And then finally, I'd offer up to you, this was no ordinary proclamation. His confession about who Jesus was tells us something extremely important, I think. It says that Jesus, being the Messiah, being the Son of God, is seen most clearly now at his death, which is interesting. It's interesting and sad that the religious leaders um, mocked him with the title by which the Roman centurion called him to be. Have you thought about that? How, how, how horrible that is from a religious leader's perspective. The Jewish leaders mocked him with the title, Son of God, King of the Jews, by which the Roman centurion acknowledged him to be, which is significant. So, what are we to make of this story? What do we make of this um, uh, episode here? Granted, we're not centurions. We're not thieves on crosses. We weren't in the, uh, in the audience that day when Jesus was crucified. And the men and women that saw firsthand the trial, the crucifixion, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, they, they saw it all. They saw it all. And I, to a certain degree, we might say they saw more than words that we can't express or heard things that we can't even imagine hearing. But the amazing thing is, that what they saw with their physical eyes, we also have seen through Scripture. And the awesome power of God is the result is the exact same for us. It's the exact same. We can draw the exact same conclusion that the centurion saw. So we can have the same conviction. We can have the same proclamation that the Roman centurion did. Jesus was a son of God who died on the cross all those years ago. And because God raised him from the dead, we too will be raised. Because God raised him from the dead, we too can live. And because he sits at the right hand of God, he intercedes for us. And we all know one day God will call us to himself and then we'll ever be with the Lord. And so at this time, let's remember Jesus and proclaim that because of Jesus' body that was broken, because of Jesus' blood that was spilled, that all of us, we can live eternally with God the Father.